Some of you might be really good at this, which is great. I have um, very clear memories of being very confused about this. Clear memories of being confused. Clear memories of things not being clear. So that's why I'm going to go back over this and hopefully, having it, you know, introduced it last year, now rather than, oh, so confusing, it'll be more like, oh yeah, I remember this, okay? So do you remember what the idea was? For auxiliary angle, we said, if you've got any two wave functions, um, actually, it's not just two. Uh, if, like, I keep saying this, but if you're unfortunate enough to do maths at university, you'll discover that you can actually have an infinite series of different kinds of wave functions. You add them all together, and what you will get, I mean, for example, if we took sine and cos, what you'll get is another wave function. So, wave plus wave will equal, let's see, where are all the spots? Right? That's where it's going to be another one. Have I missed something? Yeah. No, no, that's right. Stop messing with me. <laughs> well, something, anyway, I messed up the shape. But you get the um, You get another wave function, but the difference is, right, number one, it's got a different amplitude because you're adding up two things, um, or you're taking the difference of two things, it would have the same effect. And also, there's a shift happening, right? It doesn't start at some nice, happy spot. It starts sort of um, partway through the middle, and it ends partway through the middle as well, which you'd expect because it's periodic, right? So therefore, algebraically, how can you say this? Well, if you take two wave functions, sine and cos, okay, we can, we can restate this, right? And this is more like an identity, so it's not equals here. It's actually equivalence, which is like equality, equivalence, what's the difference? Um, equality means these two things are the same for certain cases. Okay, so for instance, when you see this, these two things are the same when and only when, or if and only if, x takes on a certain value, namely two and a half, right? However, um, that's very different to saying something like, I can rewrite this. Um, when we were doing quadratics, right, I can rewrite that as this. Okay? General form, and this is just the form which shows us what the roots are. Okay? Now these are always equal. Whatever values of A and B and C and alpha and beta uh, you come up with. Okay? So that's the difference between equality and equivalence. And this one that we're talking about is equivalence. Any values of X you can chuck in there, um, any values of A and B, it'll work. Okay? So, uh, what do we have on the right hand side? We said these two wave functions, you put them together, you get a new one that's different in two ways. What are the two ways? Amplitude, okay, which is this number out the front, so we call that R, that's the new amplitude. Okay. And then you can pick any function you like, you remember we started off with sine, okay. And the other difference apart from amplitude was, um, you can say it in two ways, you can say shift, or a more techie way of saying it is, is phase, okay. So um, I've moved it left or right, so that phase is represented by um, the auxiliary angle. This is the auxiliary angle of auxiliary angle. Okay. Now, do you remember, um, the key to working out these kinds of questions is working out what those two things are. Number one, what's the new amplitude? Um, and what is the new phase? Or what is the, um, what is the auxiliary angle? Okay, so seeing as this is review, let's go through this really, really quickly. How do you actually come up with the way, what's the way that you, we work out what these two values are? Do you remember? Good. Coefficient equality. Yeah, that's, that's right. Or maybe coefficient comparison. So what you do is, because you guys are handy dandy three unit students, you know how to expand this right hand side. So if you take the R out the front, what are we going to end up with here? This is just sine A plus B. Right? So you've got sine X cos alpha plus cos X sine alpha. And you can see the comparison of coefficients that we're interested in. Okay. R. Um, this A is the coefficient of sine x, right? So what's the coefficient of sine x here? It'll be R cos alpha, right? So that's why we say A is equal to R cos alpha, okay? And then the other coefficient we're interested in is the B, which corresponds to, again, the R because multiplying everything, but sine alpha, right? So that's why we say B equals R sine alpha. Okay, now, do you remember, there's an identity that we can take advantage of, which will let us get R out of this equation without any angles in it. How do we do that? 
You square both of these, and then you add them together, so you get a cos squared plus a sine squared, which is just 1. So, uh, skipping a few steps because you're familiar with this now, right? If we solve simultaneously for r, you get square root of, um, we square both things and add them. Right, so a squared plus b squared. Okay, sorry, say it again. Um, yeah, 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 you can do it with 10. Um, however, later on, there are dangers in using 10, but we'll get to them later. Okay. Uh, it's probably safest to go with this basic sort of format. Alright, so let's just quickly run through an example, and then let's have a look at the four natural forms for auxiliary angle. Okay? So, example, sine x plus cos x. Can we rewrite it? Okay. Well, let's just take it in this form, r sine x plus alpha. We'll look at the other three in a second. This is going to be equal to... R sine x plus alpha. So how do we get each bit? We need to know what a and b are, right? That's, how, that's where everything else comes from. The a and the b are both 1 in this case. Okay? So I can write down r cos alpha is equal to 1. r sine alpha is also equal to 1. And so therefore, if r is the square root of a squared plus b squared, it's just root 2, right? <coughs> I'm tracking with that? Nod slowly at me. Yeah, okay. So you can take this through two and bring it up into either of these equations. So I might take it into this first one. Okay. If I divide through by r, I'm getting cos alpha being equal to 1 on root 2. Okay. Um, so there's your angle. Okay. I'm doing it in radians. Right. There's r. There's alpha. So therefore, um, the r sine x plus alpha I'm interested in is simply... Um, root 2 sine x plus pi and 4. And just coming back to the um, example we did right at the beginning, that sort of checks out, doesn't it? Root 2 is about 1.4 or something, which looks about, that looks about right. My scale's a bit off, but you get the idea. Um, and also, when you think about the shift, it is pi and 4. If I went pi and 4 a little more to get to pi and 2, it'd start off at a nice neat spot rather than midway through the curve. Okay? 